So you've just got yourself your Ally X, and what I'm going to be showing you is how to upgrade the SSD immediately using cloud recovery. So the Asus cloud recovery, which is found in the BIOS. And no, when I got it, I did not boot it up whatsoever. I just immediately swapped the drive and then reinstalled the OS and everything else. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So I've got myself a WD Black SN850X NVMe drive, which is a really quick Gen 4 drive. But I've also got myself a slim copper heatsink. So this is like a really low profile heatsink. It was dirt cheap. It's just something from China. It's not like a branded one or anything because I wasn't sure if there'd be enough space to fit like a, a stock one. So I did buy a low profile one and I went with that instead. So what I recommend that you get with you is a really good screwdriver set. You don't want to be rounding off those screws. So I absolutely recommend that you've got a solid screwdriver set like the one I've got here. If you don't have it, I'll link it in the description down below. And I will say as well, you need the little cardboard feet as well. So I would highly recommend them because what I'm actually going to do is use them to protect the joysticks. Unlike the Steam Deck where it came with a case and you could just flip it upside down in that and it, you know, is molded for the joysticks and it will protect it. We've got nothing for the Ally X. It doesn't come with a case or anything like that. So I'm actually using the two little feet that it comes with, flipping the Ally X upside down and then putting the joysticks in them to protect them. And I use this method for the whole sort of process and it worked absolutely absolutely fine. Obviously, I tried not to move it around too much, but yeah, so that's what we're going to do to protect the joysticks. If you just lay it straight down on the table, then you, you might risk damaging your joysticks. So first of all, we want to get our drive, get it out as well. And then I've opened up my heat sink, which comes with some screws to, you know, clamp it down. It, it even comes with a spudger, like a big guitar pick to pry open your device. We get a little screwdriver, which I'll just immediately throw in the trash. Do not use that. It's going to be rubbish. And then we get some thermal pads as well. We've got two different thicknesses. We've got some pink ones and some green ones. I used the thicker ones in the end. So I've got my drive here and you can see this one's actually like molded rather than it being flat. And I would straight away just recommend that you just get a flat one because this one didn't really want to sit inside it very well. I managed to get it in, but it wasn't easy. It was almost like the corners that bend around the drive were like too bent in. So there just wasn't enough room to actually fit the drive in. I did manage to do it. So what I actually ended up doing was getting my drive and pulling the WD Black sticker off. So I actually pulled that sticker off first for better heat transfer. So, I mean, you could probably leave it on. It's still going to pass heat through it, right? But I thought, no, I'm going to take this off. So I peeled that off. I put my thermal pads across the top of the drive because it's only a single sided drive. And then I very carefully made it fit into the heatsink I had. So obviously this is all depending on the heatsink you get, but I'd probably recommend against the one that I've used just because it was a bit of a faff and you do run the risk of actually damaging your drive trying to get it to sit in there correctly. So now we've got the drive ready with the heatsink attached. It's time to start cracking open your Ally X. So I'm using a PH1 driver here. Now I'm fairly certain Asus say to use a zero gauge, but in my sort of testing just here, a one fit in perfectly. I wasn't afraid to round off the screws or anything like that with my driver set because it's a really good quality one. And I just went ahead. So you've got six screws to take out in all corners and then sort of two in the middle as well, at the top and the bottom. Now, all of them will come out except the bottom middle one. So it's a captive screw, right? It's, it's held in there even when you undo it. But with mine, I was actually really lucky because the next stage after we've removed the screws can be difficult. With me, when I unscrewed that bottom middle, the captive one, the chassis actually kind of very slightly popped open and it meant that I could get my pick, my spudger in there and very, very gently follow that opening while sort of gently putting a bit of pressure to try and pop the clips off so that you can then remove that back plate. Now, if you don't have that luck like I did where it automatically opens, probably go up to where the triggers and bumpers are and get your spudger in there and very gently open it. You don't want to pry with pressure and force because you will damage the clips and you might break something on the back plate just there. Okay, so now you're ready to pull the back off, but 
just hold on a second don't just rip it off because the back paddles are attached via a very small ribbon cable so you want to make sure that you don't just pull that back plate off because you will tear that cable and you don't want that so be very careful it's on the right hand side as you're seeing here there is a small piece of tape holding it onto the back plate. I'd recommend doing it on the back plate side and removing it this way rather than on the board because it's very cramped in there underneath that joystick module. And I would say it's more difficult than what I'm showing you here. So just peel back that tape and then very gently open up the plastic clip holding that ribbon cable with your fingernail or like a the plastic spudger or something like that just very gently open it up that ribbon cable will then slide out nice and easily and then you can remove that back plate entirely just pop it on the side okay and now i want you to disconnect the batteries now this one is a slide so you'll see that metal strip that silver metal strip pull that down with your fingernail or the plastic spudger or something like that and then the connector for the battery will lift up so lift that up so slide down the metal and then lift the connector up and then that's going to reveal you know the the stock drive and with that connector out of the way just unscrew your drive again do all this really slowly and carefully you don't want to be damaging anything just do it nice and slow especially if you're new to all this just remove that screw keep hold of it though you don't want to be losing that right and then gently lift lift up the drive. M.2 slots allow for the drive to be slightly lifted and then you can just wiggle it out. There is what I think is sort of shielding on the top of it instead of it's not a heat sink it's far too thin but I think this is actually shielding so I was like you know what I'm going to use this on my drive so I very carefully peeled it back and then I've actually gone and I've stuck it onto the bottom of my drive so I've got sort of the shield that came with the OEM drive in the Ally X. Then I've got my drive on top of it, and then I've got my heatsink on top of it again, making like a sandwich, right? So it's shielded underneath, then I've got the drive, and then I've got the heatsink. And now all that's left to do is to just slide your drive in carefully, evenly, and level, right? And then pop it in, pull it down towards that sort of screw bracket there and screw it down. You can see here just how much room is there. I've got a seriously low profile heatsink because I really didn't know how much space there actually would be, but you're know, looking at this space, I reckon you might even be able to get like manufacturers heat sinks in here, like big chunky heat sinks. I kind of wish I got a bigger heat sink, but honestly with that shield and the heat sink on top there, I, I think I should be all right. The only other good thing though about using a low profile heat sink is that there's no added strain or pressure on that battery cable because if you use a very large heat sink that cable is going to be at like 90 degrees up against it and it'll be getting hot right asus have actually lifted and raised the m.2 slot so there's actually enough airflow to go underneath the drive right it's not sat flush onto the board there is actually like a millimeter or two gap between the drive and the actual board itself and again with that heat sink on there as well it's going to be really good we know they've used a new cooling system with hollow fans to let the board breathe right which is called the screen down by something like seven percent or something so i definitely think that's going to aid in cooling our ssd now what's left to do is obviously replace that battery connector so what you're going to need to do is ensure that that silver sort of clip that clampy bit is still in the downward position then you need to get the connector itself push it down because remember it's a pull up not like a slide or anything so you want to line it up push it down very gently and then very carefully try and put that connector back by sliding it up. Maybe just spend a bit of time making sure that battery connector is in place and definitely locked in properly and then hopefully you'll be good to go. And now comes the other fiddly bit which is reconnecting that ribbon cable for the back paddles, right? So get your back plate, get that ribbon cable and very gently hold that cable flat and just slide it in. It only goes in like a millimeter or so. It's a very, very short connection. Just slide it in, flick that clamp back down again so that it's clamped in. Maybe put it in and out a couple of times just to make sure that you're certain that it's in there. And then what I did was I got the tape that I'd removed, reapplied it over the top of the connector just there. And then I was like, you know what, I'm good. I'm gonna stick it all back together. So I've just gently clicked in all of the clips all the way around the Ally X just there and just sort of pinched it down to make sure that it's all flush. You don't want anything sticking up. Obviously, if you're using a massive heatsink, you might have some issues here. 
depending on clearance. I've stuck it all back together now and now's time to replace all those screws. Bear in mind that bottom middle one is already captive in the back plate, right? So don't think that you've lost one. You just need five more screws in all the corners and the top middle. And now is the moment of truth, right? I'd highly recommend that you plug in your ally and just turn it on. Press the power button. It's going to power up for a second and then boot into the BIOS. What you want to do now is going into advanced mode and right at the very top, you will see Asus Cloud recovery. I did all this with touchscreen, but I'm sure the controls might work. I'm not too sure. I didn't try it. And then basically what you need to do is just tick the box and click yes, cloud recovery. And this is going to take you ages. So it will then come up with cloud recovery. You basically just click next. It's going to be searching for your Wi-Fi. So that will pop up. I'm not going to show you it here because I had, you know, had to put my Wi-Fi in and everything, but it brings up a little virtual keyboard that you can touch screen on, type in your Wi-Fi password and then that's going to bring up the Asus Cloud Recovery ready to start reinstalling Windows and everything else. So this will actually then go to a loading page and you think, oh wow, that was quick. And uh, yeah, no, you're not done yet. <laughs> this takes about an hour. It did for me at least. It then goes into the cloud recovery page. So just wait for this to do its thing. And then eventually it's going to come up saying, do you want to back up all your data? Well, obviously I've only got one drive in there and it's a completely clean drive. So no, no, I don't want to do that. So click no, like proceed. And it will just say, are you sure you're going to lose everything? We well, don't have anything on there anyway, because it's a fresh drive, right? So just click, yes, I want to proceed, delete everything, whatever, and leave it. This will now take you a good part of a solid hour, maybe longer, depending on your internet connection, because it's a 14 gig download. Now I do want to say, do not touch anything. Like absolutely don't touch anything because you might break it, right? And then you'll have to do this whole thing again. So part of the cloud recovery, once it gets quite far into it, is that it starts signing you into Windows as an administrator or even come up with like an error code box or anything like that. Just do not touch any of it. Leave it to do its own thing. It will figure itself out and you'll be good to go because it looks like you're in Windows and there'll be like a little pop-up that has like yes or no or anything like that. That is an OEM window for, you know, like Asus to be messing with. Do not touch it. Like just don't touch anything. Basically, the rule is once you've started cloud recovery and you've got past the bit where it says, do you want to keep your data or not? And you click, no, I don't want to keep it. Don't touch anything until Windows is fully booted up saying, select your language. Once you hit the language page, now you're ready to go. But in, in between that, just don't do anything. Like absolutely don't do anything. I've been seeing people on Reddit doing this with their V1 allies, you know, the original one and having all sorts of problems where, you know, the left trigger doesn't work or like whatever, right? And it's because they were messing with these pop-up windows. Just don't touch it, leave it, and then you'll be good to go. But anyway, I'm going to skip ahead right now. I'm going into the future. I'm going to check the drive speed because I know the original allies drive, at least in the pre-production model that I had from Asus, had a read speed. I think it was about 4,500 and it had a write speed of about three and a half thousand write. Well, here we're seeing just under 7,000 read, 7,000 write. So it's easily doubled the speed of the drive that comes in with the Ally, right? Which was a SN560M or something like that. But anyway, there we go. Now I've got a two terabyte drive and it's pretty much time to get installing. It ain't time to do stuff yet because it's, you still got a couple of hours of setting up and doing all the updates. But like I said, make sure you go down below, like this video, subscribe, become a member, and you can talk to me and AJ in the Discord where we've got a really nice community. Head over to the podcast channel as well and subscribe there.